new kind of car salesman. Prosecuted, kicked out, BCR'd from every First Nation in the country. And some say they target Indigenous people. It's typical that they would take advantage of someone that's struggling. How to avoid the traps. I can turn it. Nothing. Hello, I'm Todd Lamorand. Tonight on APTN Investigates, we're going for a drive. People in Canada brought home 1.9 million new cars in 2015 and spent an average of $10,000 per year per household. Cars and car loans are a huge market, but one full of traps, such as high interest loans and questionable sales tactics, some targeting Canada's Indigenous people. Josh Grummet takes a look at the wheels and deals around the country and how they ensnared a Winnipeg woman by the name of Danielle Delarond. Danielle Delarond needs a car. You have to go out and do errands. You have to go out and check on people. It's kind of hard when you don't have a vehicle. Her two kids have places to be. They go to daycare. We leave the house around 7 in the morning. And then I get off work at 4.30. And by the time I get to daycare, it's 5. So without a vehicle, I'm going to be like picking them up every day. That's fair. And is that hard? Yes, it is hard. And it's helpful for her job as well. She works as an administrative assistant in Winnipeg's North End. I love being more community-based and working with people. What, um, what is it that draws you to sort of working with people in the community? Because I grew up up north in a community called the Pasqua Cree Nation. My family is very close. We're, we make sure we always check in with each other and we like helping each other just we're really tight-knit so coming here to Winnipeg just it's just that connection I have with people she gets a lot of satisfaction out of helping people it's not like a job to me it's just just like their family because you encourage them to go out and do stuff and to make sure they're okay she tried to buy a car this summer she went to Auto List of Canada a local dealership and put a down payment on a 2010 Chevrolet Cobalt. For me, it was exciting. I thought they were being honest with me, so I trusted them right away. And then he told me that I was going to have a high interest rate, and I just said, okay, because I know I don't have credit or anything. Then he phoned me and said I got approved, and I signed a bunch of papers. Delarant agreed to lease the car, valued at $11,448, on a four-year deal. With her poor credit history, she agreed to pay an interest rate of 29.9%. She makes payments of about $98 every week. In this section of Delaron's payment history, which was provided by the dealership, we can see that of that $98, over $50 is going to interest. Only $30 or so is being applied to the value of the car. At the time she signed the deal, she owed $10,252.90 in interest and fees. For a car the dealership themselves valued only around $11,000. Delarond was on the hook for a total of $21,511.84. That's a new car price for a 6-year-old sedan with over 147,000 kilometers on it. It's the type of deal that shocks Jerry Buckland. It, it's surprising that the <clears throat> capitalized costs and the interest costs are virtually identical and so that 30 percent interest leads to that kind of 50-50 um, breakdown is surprising. Buckland is a professor at Menno Simons College, part of both the University of Winnipeg and the Canadian Mennonite University. He says Delaron's deal is a perfect example of fringe financing, the world of extreme interest rates and questionable loans and fringe financing disproportionately affects Canada's Indigenous people. The mainstream is typically we think of banks, credit unions, trust companies, and they are generally speaking very highly regulated either federally or provincially. Fringe financial providers are generally speaking weakly regulated. Um, one of the major fringe financial providers, payday lenders, are regulated somewhat, but many of them are not, like rent to owns and pawn shops and um, title loans, auto loans, these, generally speaking, are not directly regulated. Buckland says that fringe financing is common among Canada's Indigenous people because they deal with financial exclusion. 
and inability to access mainstream financing, such as credit cards and loans at prime interest rates, for a variety of reasons. The studies that I've seen find that Indigenous people in Canada tend to be overrepresented among the financially excluded population. In other words, they're more likely than non-Indigenous people as a proportion of their share of the population to be relying on, on fringe banks. And so the consequence is that they're paying higher fees and all of the other challenges associated with, with relying on fringe banks. Delarant also says those fees weren't adequately explained to her by Auto List of Canada. I just felt like they kept coming at me with stuff because I didn't know when I was too excited, like my first car. She complained that Auto List of Canada initially balked at providing her with all of her documents when she signed the lease, something they deny. Frustrated, she went to the dealership to pick up the documents. I went there on a Friday with my boss and the salesperson had the paperwork in his hands and he was about to give it to me and then the owner said no and he put his hand like that. No, we need written authorization from her. I was like, I'm standing right here, just help give the information. And they wouldn't, so we left. You were right there? Yeah. Well, if they had a form for you, mm -hmm. you could have signed it. I tried to sign a paper saying I give you authorization to release my information, and they still wouldn't. The owner just literally? Yeah. That got me mad, but I was just... I felt like I couldn't do anything because they wouldn't give me my paperwork. She received a lease buyout total in early November, but finally got her whole file on November 14th, after APTN investigates started asking questions. In fact, the email came in just as we were in her office interviewing her. Those are the lease documents she's holding. But that's not the worst of it. She doesn't even have the car anymore. He got stolen at the end of September. There was a little bit of damage done to it. And I told him to fix it because I really needed it. I just didn't care at that point. Like, I would drive it broken <laughs> as long as it was drivable and safe for my kids. But he got written off. Manitoba Public Insurance wrote off the car and paid Quick Auto Lease $5,600, roughly a quarter of what Delarond was originally paying to lease it. How does that feel? <laughs> Not good. Yeah. At the end, I just thought I was in for a good deal. <laughs> she is still on the hook for the loan. If she makes all of her payments as normal, she will have paid over $21,000 for a car worth far less, and that she only had for five months. We approached Auto List of Canada and their in-house financing company, Quick Auto Lease, for comment on Deleron's deal. Ishwar Thawani is president of both companies. He declined an on-camera interview. But he did provide us with a detailed written statement and several documents pertaining to her loan. In the statement, Quick Auto Lease confirms that Delarond is on the hook for the remaining amount of the loan, saying that in accordance with the terms of her lease agreement, if the vehicle was written off, she would be required to continue to make the payments. The company states that if Delarond paid the current balance outstanding of $8,133.23, a balance which is present in the buyout documents both the company and Delarod provided, this would result in her paying only the total sum of $11,097.83. Now, it's worth noting that the company is talking about buying out the loan. That means paying it off in one huge lump sum. The buyout balance is what Delarod would pay if she paid off the whole thing on November 9th, 2016, all in one shot but the interest on her loan accumulates each day. Note the per diem interest amount on the buyout statement. So if she still keeps making payments of $98.23 as normal, she will still have to pay an extreme amount of interest. That's something Quick Auto Lease does not mention in their statement. They do say they are still willing to sit down with Delaron to work out a deal. Is the Consumer Protection Bureau or something similar an option for her? Well, I mean, it's certainly an option to find out what her um, rights are in this situation, for sure. I mean, uh, call them up, find out if there, there's anything that they can do. I, you know, I, I really don't know in this specific case if they can help, but certainly they can provide her with more information about what her rights and responsibilities are. For Delarond, she's on her own when it comes to getting her kids around. How are you getting around without the car now? Just asking for rides and 
that's sad. Is it, is it harder getting the kids around to places? Yes, it is. We cut down on their programs because I just can't get a ride or I won't have bus change to take the bus for them. And she's lucky about one thing. One of the lease documents Delaron signed was an agreement to have a starter interrupt device installed in her vehicle by Autolist of Canada. It's designed to prevent her from ever starting her car should she fail to keep her promise to make payments when due under the contract. It never triggered for Delaron. But what happens when it does? After the break, we'll meet Thomas J. Bruner, an Edmonton man who tried to start his car one morning to take his wife to work, only to find out it had been shut down remotely. Welcome back. Before the break, Winnipeg's Danielle Dalaron told us her story. She's not alone. Many Indigenous people across the country get lured into back-breaking loans. And many don't know how to get the best car deal without going broke. But for an Edmonton man, even starting his car became impossible. Here's Josh Grummet with part two of Wheels and Deals. Thomas J. Bruner hasn't been able to drive his car for weeks. It sits here, on an Edmonton street, collecting snow. So, can you tell me what we're looking at here? This is my uh, Chevy Malibu. Right now she is down and out, unfortunately. Why is she down and out? Uh, the uh, finance company shut her down. Okay. Uh, due to there being no insurance, so this is to protect their investment, I assume. That's fair. Brush off the windshield a little bit and then we'll get in and try and start the car. Sure, sure, sure. Was it making that beeping noise when you were trying to start it uh, before it shut down? Yeah, yeah, it made it this kind of... this kind of long tone. Okay. Yeah. We'll explain that question in a minute. Let's try and uh, start the car. All right. Just put back in. Turn it. Nothing. Bruner's car is equipped with something called a starter interrupt device. It generally looks like this, a small set of circuits hidden underneath the hood. It can be triggered remotely to prevent the car from starting. They are often used by financing companies to deactivate vehicles when their owners fail to make payments. And they're becoming more common in Canada, even though they're not common knowledge. So that electrical is not even coming on, eh? No. If I was selling a car in-house financing and I have to protect my investment because I'm going to be given a car out, let's say ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 and they make a down payment, let's say $2,500 down, there's still $17,000, uh, $17, you know, sitting in the waiting. Keith Wilson is the CEO of First Nation Auto Incorporated, located in Winnipeg. He said he sometimes offers low interest rate deals to people he meets in the communities who can't access regular banks in order to help them out. He installed starter interrupt devices on his cars just to be safe. He's protecting his money. And he tells his clients their vehicle has one equipped. Wilson has an app on his iPhone that controls starter interrupt devices. He shows us how it works. Well, what you're looking at here is uh, to, to show where one of the vehicles are. I have one here in Winnipeg, here, which is blinking red. And this is a client of mine that uh, makes a payment on time and everything else. But he knows that I have a, a GPS system in there. This is where it shows that we are located. Okay, so that's right the one in your car. No, actually this is our, the, the oh, app itself in the blue. That's the app itself. Okay, yeah, so, where we, so we are, right? Yeah. So right now, my client is at home. Okay. So it just shows exactly where, and you can go to uh, a... Uh, it's a terrain, or you can go to satellite. It's important to note that these are starter interrupt devices. They don't affect the engine of your vehicle. So if a dealer sends a signal to turn off your car and it's running, it will continue to run until you stop the car. That's for safety reasons. But the next time you go to start it, it won't work. Most dealers won't just shut off your car with no warning. So there, and all I, all I can do here is I can do a command 
you know, command that can activate the starter kill, activate the starter kill in eight hours with with a uh, with a warning. Okay. I can activate starter kill with a, without coverage. Deactivate starter kill. Turn off starter disable safety. Turn on the the uh, starter disable safety uh, operation. Voltage request. I can give a payment reminder stage one, payment reminder stage two. Yep. Put a payment reminder on or off. I can have a bullseye's position request, so okay. that'll tell you exactly where that vehicle is. But I, I've been very lucky that uh, everybody has paid on time, and you know, and I never want to shut anybody off. Remember the beeping we asked Thomas J. Bruner about? That was a warning sent from his financier that he was getting behind on his payments using a system similar to the app Wilson showed us. Only, Bruner said he didn't know what that beeping meant. He found out when he tried to take his wife to work one morning. Was it beeping that whole day? Yeah, and I was I was kind of unsure what that was about. Um, perhaps I didn't read my contract fully or something, but uh, uh, we, we were um, uh, a couple weeks behind on, on the payment schedule, and then we started to hear a beep in the vehicle, so uh, we thought that it might be a mechanical thing or something that we'd have to eventually get checked out. So we just moved forward and all of a sudden the next day we went to start and realized that it didn't start. And it made this weird beeping noise and it kind of clued into us that we, we may be, uh, there may be more controls in place than we anticipated. So nobody explicitly told you if you miss your payments, the car will shut down? Uh, not to my recollection. Kevin Carlson sells cars at Northland Ford a dealership located on Opasquiac Cree Nation, near the Paw in Manitoba. He used to work for Manitowi Kuwait Noe Okamakanak for many years and is well known here. I think it helps that uh, you know, citizens from outlying First Nations have an understanding of who they're talking to. They know that there's a certain amount of trust and responsibility that comes from saying that you know, you're the only dealership that's on reserve land. In his time with Northland Ford, he has sold cars with starter interrupt devices. My four years, I th think I've done maybe four of them. Usually what we'll do when their contract is up is ask them to, to come back in here and we'll remove it for free at, uh, as, as soon as it's done because you wouldn't want that thing glitching the system afterwards, right? For his part, Bruner is focusing on getting his finances back on track. Right now I'm going to uh, McEwen University and that's a four-year term and I'll walk away with a bachelor of communication and on the weekends I'm back at the security company to keep, uh, keep finances somewhere resembling in the black. That's something a lot of the people we spoke to for this story know something about. There are programs out there, credit counseling is another avenue to go down if a person is having trouble with debt and they're interested to make some you know, changes in terms of their understanding of uh, finances. The quickest thing, I mean, the interest is charged on what you're borrowing, right? Yep. So if you can throw some extra money at the principal and it brings down your principal amount faster, you're going to be paying less interest. A lot of people don't realize that they have certain rights, that as financial consumers in Canada, we all have rights. And so we do have the right to expect financial services to be um, offered to us in a fair and respectful way. And if they're not, then we have recourse. So we can, uh, for instance, go to the Consumer Protection Bureau or we can go to the Financial Consumer Agency of Canada. Luckily, Bruner can still make sure his family gets around okay. I do bus around when it's it's just me that needs to go to school and back uh, in terms of uh, shopping and stuff. Uh, I, my mother's been very generous in letting us use uh, her vehicle for for you know the big shopping expenditures or if we need to do some extensive running around that busing would be really inconvenient so that's what we're doing in the time being until we're we're back on the road ourselves. Starter interrupt devices aren't the only thing in the wheels and deals of the auto landscape to watch out for. 
There's another trap out there for Canada's Indigenous peoples, and it's called affinity fraud. David Krause works with Keith Wilson at First Nation Auto Incorporated. It's pre presenting yourself as, as something you're not. And what it does is it gives people the impression that, that they're dealing with a, a First Nation person, and so now I feel more comfortable as a First Nation person. They're marketing to my affinity, uh, for, to my community, or to, to, to my people, um, or, or First Nations people, and they're not. They're lying to me. It's a lie. I'm getting calls, actually, from people saying that, oh yeah, I was dealing, trying to get, get a car from this First Nation dealer. And I'm going, First Nation dealer? Well, who is that? Then they would name the, the names, and then I go, well, they're not First Nation. Affinity fraud is one possible result of the poor regulation of Canada's fringe financing market. It's uh, not illegal. It's one of those gray areas. But if you're deliberately misleading somebody, it can be argued. But I, I don't think anything in sort of a, a legislative sense that, that people can pretty well advertise and say what they want until they can't. And it usually involves civil litigation. But you have a whole bunch of these guys going around calling themselves First Nations this, Aboriginal that, Motors or whatever you want to call them, and it's, it's okay. But if myself do it, it would be an uproar. If I tried my Chinese auto, Ukrainian auto, you know, it just wouldn't fly with anything. But if you can use a First Nation name, it's allowed. Just another wheel and deal to watch out for. That's it for this week. Next week, Dennis Ward takes us to the Standing Rock protests. The largest gathering of tribal nations in more than a century. We're here to save sacred water. We're here to save our sacred site. But there would be a cost for those protecting the water and land. This is recreating the cycle of colonization that we've been fighting for over 500 years. Hundreds have faced arrest. They put us in cages, and who does that? A clash at Standing Rock. Thousands of people have gathered from across the world to stop the Dakota Access Pipeline. And APTN has been there almost from the beginning. This isn't nothing new for Native people. This is nothing new for Dakota and Lakota people. On this very land, we face off with the same aggression. There's, there's 10 different ways that the president could shut this down. It's the best thing to do. It's the best thing if he's serious about fighting climate change. It's the best thing to do if he's serious about uh, healing racial tensions in this country. This is just more about you know stopping a pipeline. It's about Indians being able to meet on their own lands, come together on their own lands. Dennis brings us in-depth interviews and stunning footage. That's next week. I'm Todd Lamoran. Have a great evening.